up this Forest River Cedar Creek Cottage. So I'm here to tell it's going up to Alaska. We hope it's going to do pretty good up there. I think you'll enjoy it a lot. Uh, we're going to start right here at the front of your rig. Hopefully this isn't something you have to mess with too often, but this is your tongue jack. Uh, it's a manual crank tongue jack, one direction or the other. Uh, right here in front of that tongue jack, you've got a coupler. That coupler has a 2 and 5 16 ball and this little safety catch uh, that will not allow itself to open when there's pressure on that inner well. Right behind your tongue jack, you've got two propane bottles. These are 30 pound bottles. They hold about seven and a half gallons of propane a piece. And on the side of them right here is a dual stage regulator with a selector valve on the front of it. You've got little green indicator flags that will turn red when the bottle that is indicated goes empty. Uh, when that bottle does go empty, this thing only pulls from one bottle at a time. So you can leave both bottles open. When this turns red, you can rotate that um, 180 degrees, come on the other side, and uh, that flag will turn red. When that flag is red, you're out, turn it over here, it'll turn green, you're good to go on your propane. Cover comes back on the top of it. You can access the bottles and their valves on the uh, top side here. These little thumb latches unscrew and open up, and this valve pops open, okay? So leave that. These thumb screws, always leave them on the rear of this whenever you put it on. That way that flap can accidentally open up and uh, be gone. It's got little tension grips on the bottom of both sides of this cover. So when it goes down on there, it won't come flying back off while you're driving down the road. Right here you have a seven way. This is the umbilical between your vehicle and the camper. It has a nifty little holder right here that'll hold the seven way and both of your safety chains here in the same location so they're not just dragging the ground. Right underneath here, you have a breakaway cable. It's attached to a plastic pin inside of this control box. You have electronic brakes on this thing. They have electric magnets that grab the inside of the hub and that's how they operate. This thing right here will be attached to your tow vehicle next to the safety chain when you're towing the vehicle. In the unlikely event it ever becomes decoupled from your vehicle, your safety chains exist to keep it attached to your vehicle. This breakaway pin will pop out after that line is tensioned and it will lock your vehicle, your uh, trailer brakes up behind you so that you have it slowing down uh, as you're moving down the road trying to find somewhere to pull off of. Okay, right here on the front, you have a, uh, you've got a pre-installed propane, uh, pre-regulated, regulated by the bottles, uh, quick disconnect for a propane line. So if you get a little portable grill or something like that, you don't have to put the inline regulator on it. It's already regulated from your normal propane system. Right here behind your propane bottles, you have a Group 24 deep cycle marine grade battery and a snap top box with an extra strap over the top of it just in case so that it can't possibly come flying off. You'll notice on this rig, you've got four of these scissor jacks on both sides. You have eight of these stabilization jacks on here, so when you do find you a place you want to camp for a while, you've got a lot of good stabilization. This is a big old rig, and you want to make sure that when you walk around inside of it, it's good and solid. So run those down. They are just for the purposes of stabilization. You don't want to use the stabilization jack to try to level this unit out, make it move one direction or the other, or up and down. You want to level it out front to back with your tongue jack. If it needs to be leveled side to side, do so by putting something underneath your tires on whichever side is lower, backing over it so that they're higher up. Once you're level side to side and front to back, then you can put all eight of your stabilization jacks down. When they hit the ground and have a lot of good tension to them, that's when you let off of them. Right under here, you can see a couple different drain lines are over here. This one right here is going to be the low point drain Right back over here, this other blue line you see sticking down is going to be the drain for your fresh water tank, which would be the stored fresh water that you would carry with you. You also have right here one of your gray water release valves. That's going to release the gray water that's being held in the storage tanks under your rig, and they will come out from that exit point that's right there at the back of the unit. Moving over here to the midsection on the driver's side. You've got a pre-wired port. It's got different uh, satellite functions or cable functions. You've got a bedroom satellite and a living room satellite. Should you have a portable satellite system, you don't have to run a cable through the window or have to install one. It's already pre-installed and there are corresponding coaxial ports on the inside to hook up your receiver to. So this is just a pass through for your exterior satellite should you have one. Also, if you're at a park that has any kind of cable access, this top one on the right side is your cable. There's also a corresponding coaxial on the inside for just that piece. These three are not really interchangeable. This one has a 12 volt signal that's on the inside from your rooftop antenna that will interfere with either of these two should you get them confused because your receiver is gonna be pushing 18 volts of DC electricity through these ports right here. So 
It's labeled right here on the top for your convenience, but living room satellite, bedroom satellite, and cable connection. You come pre-installed with a lot of different Furion plug and play features. Uh, this is the harness for the side view cameras. You've got another one on the other side. You also have the rear view pre-wire on the back, and I think you have one above your door as well. All these are appliances that are sold by Furion. These are installed for your convenience so that all you have to do if you wanna use any of these appliances is simply take the cover off and plug it into the harness that exists in there and remount it using the same screws. Very, very easy to install should you decide to do so. This is your RV Park uh, short power. It's a 50 amp cable, uh, and this is not your cable. This is just one we have hooked up to to show you. And we are running this entire unit off this 30 amp cable right now. It's a 30 amp stepped up into a 50 amp recept or receptacle uh, plug, male end. Um, you will have a 50 amp cord, it's inside of your unit, uh, but this whole rig will run off 30 amps should you need it to. You'll only be able to run one of your air conditioners instead of both of them. Right here is the outside vent for your uh, 12 volt uh, propane furnace. Uh, this is just the furnace that you would operate off the thermostat on the inside. Uh, you don't have to do anything to the outside, this is just the exterior fixture and your exhaust ports here. I would recommend if you're somewhere that has uh, a lot of bugs or you're storing this, there is a mesh cover that you can get from Suburban uh, that covers this up because you don't want to get a bunch of dirt daubers and, uh, and wasps and stuff like that up in there uh, making all sorts of making all sorts of designs and awesome things that are going to catch on fire and not be safe for you. So mm. I recommend getting some kind of little mesh cover for that right there. Moving over here. This is just an access to your water pump that's in here. Your water pump has, your water pump has a built-in um, antifreeze line right there. It's actually got a little bit of antifreeze in it still, but it has a shutoff valve that's right here. Uh, so if you need to winterize this unit, which I may think you may need to, uh, the winterization valve is located right here on the inside of this door. If you want to winterize using your water pump, you just turn that valve uh, in line with this hose that's right here with it. Uh, you will siphon antifreeze up through a jug and it'll pump it throughout your entire fresh water system. When you're ready to use it as just a water pump again, just turn that valve back up in line with the vacuum line on that pump and you're good to go. You've got a couple different connections that are right here. This is your city water connection. This is a straight line connection. You do not have to have any kind of pump or anything to use this fixture. This is just a connection from here using a water hose to a berry hydrant or a frost proof or whatever water source you have. Um, you plug it in right there. Once there's pressure to this line, you have pressure on all your faucets on the inside. You don't have to turn on a pump. It's not filling a tank. It's not doing anything like that. This one uh, is just the opposite of this, actually. This is a freshwater connection. This is what you would use to fill up the storage tank for fresh water that is mounted on the bottom side of this unit underneath the floor line. So this is for your stored water right here. It looks exactly like that one, uh, but this fills the tank, this one does not. This here is a black tank flush. Looks exactly like your other two fixtures, but it is actually for use while uh, dumping via the termination gate right here. You would use this fixture to clean out your black tank uh, after you've dumped it out. And while the black tank handle is still open, because you're gonna be filling that tank up with water through a, a reciprocating head mounted on the inside of the tank. So you want that pressure to be able to go somewhere. Right here is that termination gate. It has a cap that's on it right now. You've got another low point drain underneath here and then you have a couple of valve handles that are right here. You have a black tank and a gray tank handle here. The black tank is for your septic or your sewer tank. The uh, gray tank is another one of your fresh water or your uh, gray water storage tank. So this one would be for your bathroom. The one in the front would dump the galley which is for your kitchen sink. Um, leave those valves closed at all times unless you are actually dumping. And it, when you do decide to dump this out, if you get about three quarters full is the ideal time to do it. Um, you're always gonna dump your black water first. After you've dumped that, use that fixture if you want to. If you don't want to use it, close the black tank back up and then open your gray valve there and your gray valve at the front. <laughs> Another access door right here. There is your power cord. Uh, hydraulic system is right here, mounted here uh, with the different various shutoff valves right there should you wanna shut one of these rooms off at a time. And then you have a residential style electric only water heater. Um, so there is a switch on the inside of the closet that's gonna turn that on. It does not operate off of uh, propane, it's just electric only, but being residential, it heats very fast and it has a very high capacity. So it's a pretty nice, nice little feature on these things. Right here's a storage compartment, currently has your vacuum attachments in it right now, uh, but it's an enormous storage compartment and it is accessible from the inside of the unit. Oh, from under the bed? Yes, sir. On the back of your rig here, 
there is a license plate mount mounted right here underneath the passenger side tail light. And right up there is that Furion pre-wired connection we were talking about uh, for the observation camera for the rear of your rig. Uh, it syncs to a wireless display that you can put on the inside of your truck, runs off of a 12 volt lighter. Uh, it is again a simple plug and play. There's four screws holding on that plate right there. Four screws out, camera mounts with one wire, camera goes in, four screws hold it back in. Uh, it, it automatically pairs. So. Handy little device, especially when you're going around something this size. You've got your awning on the side right here. It's got an LED light strip that's already mounted on it. Uh, it comes eight foot out from the side of the rig. It's a pretty good size awning. Um, it does have an adjustable hitch to it. These LCI Solaris, when you extend them out, there's a little crossbar that's right here, and uh, it's pivot, it pivots in the middle. When you run this out to full extension, you can pivot that to pivot your awning and tilt it one direction or the other or down. Uh, always remember, before you run this awning back in, you want to raise both of those bars up to their back in line with each other. Okay. Rear, um, right here you have a rear entry door. It's for access into your bedroom and uh, it's a quick way to get into your bathroom right there without having to go into the uh, sliding door there and down the hallway. You have the fold out two steps that are right here on the back of it. Right here on the wall, you've got a little stopper and a lock piece uh, that will attach to this door right here when it's open if you want it to stay open and not be able to, to freely move back and forth. Right here, mounted on the outside, you have your exterior speakers. They are waterproof speakers uh, and they have a pretty good sound quality to them and they're, they're pretty loud. So I'll show you how to operate those on the inside. <clears throat> right here, we have that other Fury on. Uh, it's a clearance light essentially, but it has the, op the, uh, the, uh, the ability to become a, a side view camera. Right here, you have an external 120 volt GFI protected outlet and another coaxial connection. Uh, but this one, as opposed to the other side, which are all ins, is an out. So should you have some kind of TV on the outside here, uh, you have the ability to hook into your, your cable side of it. Uh, there's no satellite feed to this, but you can hook into your cable via either the cable port on the other side or your rooftop antenna uh, mounted on top and operated by 12 volt. You have a nice little sliding glass patio door here. It has a blind built on the inside of it. Uh, it does lock from the outside or the inside. And you also have a set of solid steps here. These are by Moride and these are detachable. There's a little trigger underneath both sides of this little L bracket. Uh, when you squeeze it, it detaches from that clamp right there. And you can, when you're not fighting an asshole, top those steps off and store them in there or inside here if you'd like to. Uh, whenever you're ready to reinstall them, just come over here and line them up. Get them set up where they're going. Pull those triggers down. And again, like that. Just tap right in place, in place, pull on them, make yep. sure they're not going to go anywhere. Uh, they do have adjustable legs on them. You've got a set of pins here and here that push out uh, and allow you to adjust these legs independent of each other if you're on a weird slope or on a different angle than you were uh, right here. Okay, let's look at the front. On this side. Nope, oh, I think we've got all we needed to do on the outside. Let's go take a look yep. at the inside. Perfect. Right here as you come in the door, you've got a couple different control panels right here. This right here is just a little accent light that operates off of your kitchen island down there at the bottom. The one right here on the very top is a max air fan controller. You have a max fan that is right there above where your ceiling fan is in your living room. Uh, this controller right here is going to operate that fan and the lid for that fan. You've got a fan on button that's right there. A fan off button is right below it. Then you have a vent open and a vent closed. So you can have the vent open with no fan and you can close the vent by itself or you can do the whole thing by just pushing the fan off or a fan on button. It'll open the vent fan or it'll turn the fan on and open the vent at the same time when you're using just the fan control buttons. You have a 10 button Dometic thermostat right here. It's got a couple different buttons on it. The only ones you really will be using that often are going to be your mode and your zone as well as the power button that's right here. You got two different zones. Zone one would be the forward most air conditioner. Zone one is where you're also going to operate your furnace that we were looking at outside. Uh, and then zone two is just your air conditioner uh, that is situated about in the middle of this unit. So to function through this thing, you turn it on with the power button just like that. You've got zone controls here. Right now we have it set on zone two and it's set on cool. So here in a minute, that'll kick back on on that air conditioner. Zone one, go through the modes. You've got cool, auto, high performance, furnace, and then just a fan, which is the air conditioning unit running without the uh, compressor attached to it. So it's a little bit less amp draw 
uh, and you still get air movement inside of your rig. And then back to the off function on zone one. Zone two is just cool. And you've got your fan control right there and the off function right there. Use this clock button right here to program the setup clock on here. Uh, after you've done that, then you can go through program and you can go through your inside temp and your Fahrenheit controls and all that up. Set this up exactly how you want it to be for wherever you're at. All right, we're gonna go back through here and turn that on so we can be cooling down in here while we're going through the rest of this. Yeah, all right. Yeah. <clears throat> so right down here, right below all those things, you have a wired in carbon monoxide and propane gas alarm. It functions off both of those things. It's got a little sensor right here that's pulling air through it all the time. Uh, so if you get some carbon monoxide or some propane in here, it's got a light right here and a light right here that'll flash different things. Uh, you have an index right here telling you what the different color combinations mean. You also have a test mute button right here. Being a hardwired device, you do not have to replace the batteries on this. Anytime you have energy inside in here, as far as 12 volt goes, this is energized as well. It also has a replace by uh, code right down here and it has an end of life alarm which is a very specific alarm just telling you that the sensor on this thing is clogged up and it's time to replace it it's a very easy thing to replace there's two screws that hold it in there and two wires in the back of it it's just 12 volt electricity it won't hurt you uh, and these probably run about 40 bucks and they're usually good for about six or seven years so hopefully nothing you have to worry about too soon it works <clears throat> turn this back on okay so right here, you have your convenience center control panel. This is where most of the operations for the living room uh, are gonna be found for this unit. Right here, this switch on the left is going to be the ceiling fan switch for that ceiling fan that's mounted right there by that max air fan uh, on your ceiling right over there. It's a dual direction fan. It'll pull air up or push air down and then it's got a chain. Uh, this selects the speed on the side of it just like a normal ceiling fan does. You have your different monitor levels right here. You've got uh, your battery, which is going to show your battery at full anytime you are plugged in, which right now it's a brand new battery. It is in fact full. Uh, but if you're plugged in, it will always show that it's full. So if you want a true and accurate reading of how much juice you have on your battery, unplug your unit and press that button right there. You also have a fresh tank sensor, a black tank sensor, and two gray tank sensors, all of which are currently empty. Right here, you have a tank heater button. This has a polar package on it, so it has a 12 volt heating pad stuck to all of your storage tanks, both your gray tanks, your black tank, and your fresh tank. It's not gonna warm anything up, but it will keep everything over 40 degrees. That's what it's intended to do. So it's a good thing to use during cold weather. Um, and when you're, when you're storing it somewhere that's fairly cold, you can leave that on as long as you're plugged in. Right here, you have the water pump control switch. That's just for pulling water up out of the fresh tank. If you're hooked into the side with city water connection, you do not need this switch at all. But if you are using your stored water in there, you kick that on. It is a self-pressurizing, um, diaphragm operated pump it'll pressurize itself up to 55 psi and then it will shut off there's no need to turn that off every time you get done using water you can leave it in the on position all the time because when the pump builds up 55 psi it will shut up and it'll stand there ready uh, whenever you turn your faucet on then you will have the full pressure it will run the entire time they're using your faucet when you shut the faucet off it will repressurize and it'll shut back off you have a porch light switch, an awning light switch, and the first of your ceiling light switches that's in here. It would be these accent lights above your sink right here. And then you have two other ceiling light switches. The one on the left is gonna operate the front, the front section of lights right there, and the one on the right is gonna operate these rear section of four lights. You have a slide room control button. You have three slide rooms on this rig, and they're all hydraulic. Um, they all operate at the same time, which is why those valves I showed you outside on that pump are necessary if you only have the ability to open up one of them or two of them. If you can't open up the entire other side, you can turn those little black valves off that are on your hydraulic pump and kill one of the lines to the room or two lines to the rooms or whatever you need to do. Um, so when you hold this button out, all three of them will come out uh, at the same time, usually following the path of least resistance. Your smallest one will come out first, then your medium second, and your heaviest one will come out last. They'll do the exact same thing when they come in. And again, you just have to hold that button down until all three of them come in. It does have a slide room safety switch right here. When that switch is off, there is no power to your hydraulic pump. So your rooms are essentially in lockout. Uh, that's good for traveling. And that's also good for when you're using this rig, they can't accidentally come in for any reason. Only other button you have here is your awning control button. Uh, you simply push it out and it'll run out about eight feet. There's a little flap that's about six inches long that'll hang down off of the tube. When you see that flap, you're at full extension and that's when you need to let off the button. This button does not have any kind of sensor to it telling it it's gone too far. 
So if you continue to hold down on the awning out button, it will just roll all the way out and then roll itself up in reverse upside down when you don't want that. So be, be paying attention when you're using your awning out button. Make sure you're paying attention when that flap comes down and you let off the button. When you're running it in, you don't have to really worry about it. When it comes to the side of the room, it makes contact. There's nowhere else it can go and you're not gonna hurt anything if you accidentally run it too long coming in. And that's your control center. Under the control center, you have this nice little uh, storage compartment. It's got hangers on the sides of it. You have little replacement uh, straps for your blinds across the front of your slide door. Underneath that, you have your power control center. These are all of your breakers for all your big ticket items. You've got your outlets on here, your water heater, your converters, ACs, all that stuff that is powered by 120 volt is gonna be operated off these breakers right here. Everything that's operated off 12 volt is gonna be operated right here off these fuses. They are all labeled and they are all telling you what the amperage rating on each individual fuse should be. So should you need that, hopefully you never have to mess with this at all, but should you need it, that's where it is. Clicks back into place. All right, right over here, we've got lots and lots of storage, just absolutely everywhere. Got this King router that's mounted to the wall right here for, uh, it's a it's an upgrade system, you have to activate it and use it, but this is for uh, Wi-Fi extension and Wi-Fi uh, supply. So it's a pretty neat little deal they throw in these things. Down here you've got a drawer, you have trash cans, and then you have more storage underneath your countertop right here. You have a big two-door, chest freezer LG residential refrigerator here. It does only operate off of 120, but being a residential style refrigerator, it operates very quickly. So as opposed to some of the RVs that use absorption style refrigerators, this residential will cool down in about an hour versus the eight hours it would take you on an absorption style. It has right here a little travel latch, this little puck with the threaded bolt on the end of it. And there is the nut that is right there on the crossbar. So if you're gonna do some traveling and you do not want these French doors to open up, put that right there in the middle and thread it into place and that keeps everything from being able to open up while you are traveling. The controls for the refrigerator and freezer are all right up here. You have a uh, freezer select button, refrigerator select button, uh, then you've got the ice control button and the water filter alarm. So then there's your digital readings on what the uh, temperatures currently are. Okay, this big pantry right here has these pull-out drawers, and they are slow-close drawers. So they'll go back in and tension themselves back up the way they need to. Close that back up. You have spice racks or cabinets, whatever you want to call them, on both sides of your residential style oven. It is a residential style oven designed for an RV. Uh, it's a pretty easy deal to operate. You've got a panel light that's right here that just shines a little blue light onto this, makes it a little bit easier to see if you're having a hard time because your readouts for everything are built onto these knobs. This one right here is the oven light, turns on the light right there inside there. Uh, and these are all self-igniting. When you push this down, the igniter turns on. Uh, and I have your gas off right now, I think, but uh, if we don't, we can, nope, we got it. We can hold that down and it'll self-ignite. We may have it off. Yeah, he, yeah, I think I turned it back off. But anyways, hold it down, it'll self-ignite, uh, turn it over to the high, which is the first indicator right here, uh, and it'll ignite itself. You can turn them all on at the same time and hold down one, it'll ignite all four of them. Hmm. You also have an igniter built into your stove. And then you can set it on the pilot right there and then rotate it to whatever temperature you need it to be. Being a residential style, it is a lot more true and accurate than any RV oven you'll ever find. Uh, it actually, when you put it to 350 or 400 degrees, it actually holds at 350 or 400 degrees. It doesn't have any of the random fluctuations that plague uh, normal RV ovens. Right above that oven, you have this gigantic microwave. It's a nice little deal that you've got on here. You've got a, a light controller here, just a uh, work light for above your range if you're cooking over here. You've got a vent. It's got a high fan and a low fan. Helps pull some of the exhaust or the uh, heat or the smoke or whatever off of what you're cooking on the stove pulls it up and pushes it out of the way for you. And the off button's right there. The rest of it operates just like a normal microwave. There's nothing RV specific about it. Uh, there's no learning curve to it. It's just a normal microwave. Cabinet right above that, storage. It also has the cord for power to your microwave. And it is a slow flow. You've got storage cabinets above your TV that's here. You've got a big TV mounted here. 
in the travel strap that keeps it from being able to move back and forth because it is on an actuated arm uh, that moves back and forth and you can position it and then move it around if you're in that couch versus that couch over there. Underneath that, you have your entertainment system right here. It does have Bluetooth on it. It's got a uh, disc mode, it's got AM, FM radio, uh, and it operates off two different speaker zones. Interior speakers here. Um, no rooftop speakers we have to worry about, so you just got your interior sound bar that's built in right here, and your exterior speaker on the outside underneath your awning. Exterior speakers are gonna be speaker zone two, and interior will be zone one. You can run both sets of speakers at the same time, um, but be cautious of running speaker set two if you're in here watching a movie or doing something like that, because if speaker set two is on, your neighbors are listening to it with you. So just be mindful of that whenever you're done with your exterior speakers, turn them off right there at that button. Right below that, you have this electric fireplace. It's got a bunch of different functions to it, a bunch of different light modes to it, a bunch of different colors to it, uh, and different ranges of heat, brightness, and it has a built-in thermostat with it. There is also a remote for that, and the remote for it, your TV, for this entertainment system are all in that green bag that's currently in the microwave. All right, all of your big windows in here in your living area have slow closed blinds to them. They also have sun shades on them. So if you just want to block out some of the sunlight, pull that down. When you get it down low enough, let go of it to lock itself in place. So you can block out just the actual sunlight or you have the blackout shades built on top of it, drop them down, and it blocks out all visibility whatsoever. All of these windows come equipped with that. All of these windows in your slide room do the same. You got your main big couch right here, three-seater couch. Behind that couch, look right down over there, Rob, is a screen door. Uh, it's just a simple little tension strip. Uh, it goes into the outside channel on your sliding glass door that's right there. Uh, we can't install it before it's sent to you because you're not supposed to travel with that on there. So we'll leave it stowed right there uh, where it came from the manufacturer and it'll be ready and waiting for you to install whenever it comes to. Right here on the side of your island, is your vacuum switch. It's where you're gonna plug your vacuum hose in, that vacuum hose that's over there in, uh, in that rear storage compartment. So you have a little centralized vacuum system right there. You have you a power set love seat right here. It's got buttons on either side of it. So you got one that goes all the way up and leans you all the way back, and then you got one on the other side that does the same thing. It comes with cup holders right there and a little flip top armrest store your remotes or what have you inside there. Okay, let us see. You've got two different accent lights right here, dinette and above the sofa. Uh, you've got a four chair dinette right here. It has a leaf that's built in the bottom of it right here. It pulls out, it meets up flush with the rest of the table. Uh, you want to make sure before you run your slide rooms in, this is tucked back away. It is a little bit too long to agree with this uh, kitchen island right here. So before you close your slide rooms in, you're gonna lift up on that part of the table, push that back in, and drop the top of it back on there. You've got travel straps for all of your chairs right here. And uh, all of these chairs also have flip top bottoms. Uh, so if you got something you need to store in there, placemats or anything like that, you can store them in each of these chairs. Uh, there is a light switch that I walked past a moment ago. You've got a set of two switches that are right here behind your TV above this power outlet. It's kind of hard to see. It's in a weird spot. Let me ignite your stove while I'm laying back here. But uh, one of them is for the accent lights over the top of the TV. The other one is for the accent lights built into the sides of your entertainment center. And there's one other fixture right there. If you can, if you can get a picture or a video of this, Rob. This is your satellite hookup and your cable hookup. Uh, and it also has the power switch for your 12 volt antenna on the roof. That little black button right there, that green light indicates that you have power to your rooftop antenna. Green light off means you're ready to pull a signal through that coaxial connection for cable located on the outside. Okay, right here on your island, you've got a little retainer cabinet. You've got a drawer with a silver silverware divider already in it. You've got two cabinets underneath your kitchen sink. There is the bag and the power switch for your uh, centralized vacuum built right there into the bottom of your island. And then right here, you have an RV dishwasher. It's a pretty neat little deal, little chest dishwasher. Uh, got your silverware deal right here, and then all your little slotted pieces that are in here and some fold up ones if you have some more stuff to put in there. There is an entire owner's manual on this, as well as every other appliance in here. Again, in that green bag right there in that microwave behind you. 
It's a very simple thing to operate. Uh, it does it pretty much like a residential style one. You've got your pause and play, uh, you've got your lock mechanism, you've got your power button, and then all your selecting and temperature and stuff like that is up here. Pretty much covers the living area. Let's move back here down the hallway. You got your hallway light switches right here beside this door to your bathroom. Your bathroom door is a pocket door, it's a sliding door on a rail up on the top. Uh, and back here in the back corner of it, there is a little pull up horseshoe latch. You can see that it's right back here. Uh, locks it into place whenever you don't want it to move for travel. When you're ready to use it, just pick it up and move it over. Hold door slides over, lock it off slides back. We've got towel racks on the back wall. This is the uh, the vent fan that's right there built into the wall. We've got a big storage cabinet right here. We've got four different compartments to it. Little paper holder is right there. Now this is an RV specific toilet. It does not have a reservoir tank like the uh, residential one would possibly have. Uh, so when you want to have water in it, you have to put water in it. And the way you do that is by half pressing on this paddle. Uh, don't push hard enough that the ball rotates all the way forward. Uh, just hard enough that the water starts filling it up. Put whatever water level in there you need it to be. Uh, do your business and then push it all the way down. It'll get rid of it for you. You do have air ducts in here and you have heat ducts in here. So you don't have to worry about leaving the door open so that you can cool off or warm up in here. Uh, you do have a medicine cabinet built into this right here. Another towel rack on the wall. Sliding glass door uh, and just a normal RV shower. Uh, sliding glass door has a travel lock on it right here and you want to make sure that you use that anytime you are traveling You do not want these doors to be able to freely move back and forth because with enough momentum They will hit the wall and they will break and we don't want that for you. Will so, shatter. Yeah, you yeah. bet you bet they are plate glass um, So yeah, make sure you use that travel lock anytime you're moving back and forth with the stream Sink here storage underneath Right here on the wall. You've got your three power switches. Uh, this one is for your vent fan mounted on the wall right there on the far right then you've got your accent lights on the bottom is the middle switch and of course the outside switch is going to be your main overhead light. You also have that GFI receptacle right there on the wall. Uh, that is the reset point for all of your GFI receptacles, anything within four foot of water or outside. If it has some kind of ground fault, that's where you reset it is right there on that receptacle. And if you want to test that system, the test button is right underneath it. And that's your bathroom. Let's say probably only enough room for one of us to go upstairs so if you want to go up there and yep. just show him the loft on either side so up here we get a loft on both sides got two beds a storage area for kids uh, looks like some gfi plugs and a tv satellite coax area more storage Going over to the other side, we've got another bed with GFI plugs, LED lights, and an exhaust fan. All right. Okay, here's the steps. Just past that, we're going to step down into the master bedroom. In the master, you got a couple of different neat things. One thing uh, I almost always forget to tell people, but it's a really cool thing. You have a hidden storage compartment built right into the top of this dresser drawer right here. So it's a neat little thing. If you have something you want to keep in here uh, incognito, that's a great place to put it right there. You've got your normal dresser drawers in there. There's the remote for the pre-mounted TV that's already up there. Bottom. These are all slides. It's got the lighting under the It does. It has the, it has the accent yeah. lighting right accent there. Yeah. Lighting, yeah. Yep. And the switches for it are right there on the wall. The, uh, I think it's the switch on the right would be for your overhead. On the left, it's yeah. going to be for your accent lighting. Uh, you have the same blackout shades here as you do in the front. Uh, no sun shades in this part of it, but you do have the blackout shades all the way around. You also have an auxiliary heater and fan built into the wall right here. Very easy operation. Uh, it's got a power switch. It's got a, a thermostat built into it, or fan speed selector, sorry. Uh, and it also has a night mode button. So if you want to run this in the evening time, you don't want it to be super loud, push that night mode button. Uh, and it'll bring that fan speed down for you. Receptacles on both sides. You have pre-wired uh, USB ports on both sides of the bed as well. So you can charge your phone without having the adapter block. 
your valances over your window shades also act as night tables. So on the top of them, if you want to throw your phone up there, windows charging or tablet or what have you, uh, it's a great place for a bedside book or, or whatever you need to use there. Big sliding door for this cabinet. It is kind of pre-set up for a washer and dryer. You got your hot and cold and your drain lines are all right here. And then you have your plugs for your washer and your dryer right here. If it was a stack version, if it was just an all-in-one, you could just use one of these plugs. And if it is a setup that you wanted to do that had a vent, this is where you're going to be drilling. Your vent is somewhere right in line with this sticker, depending on the height of the manufacturer's specs. It does have a little travel lock that engages when you close it. So it doesn't just free move back and forth while you're driving down the road. You also have travel locks on this part of your closet. Little horseshoe locks, just like the ones that are in your bathroom on your pocket door. This opens up. On this side, you have that switch right there on the wall, which is the switch to operate the heating element in your residential style water heater. That's pretty much right on the other side of the wall from that. So that's where you're gonna, that's what you're gonna use to energize it. Uh, it'll take probably about 20 minutes to get up to temperature. And once it is, you've got a pretty good volume of water. You can take a good long 10, 15 minute shower and you should have plenty of hot water to do so. This door will shut. This one opens and you have a light switch on this side. Oh so good, yeah. You got the built-in hanger bar that's all the way across the top. And it's the ones that have the slotted pieces. So whenever you hang something up, it stays there instead of sliding back and forth every time you make a corner. Okay. Rock, you think of anything That's about else? it. I, I think, I can think it of uh, the little peephole. That's about it. It does have a peephole. It does, right there in your entry door. <laughs>